Sunday evening, summer 1968, Normandy. The sultry heat of the day is finally fading, the cooler evening air perfumed with the scent of fields all around. The road is still warm to the touch, heat radiating into the cloudless sky. There is no noise but for the breeze through the long grass. Then, from the south, a rising engine note. High revs and swift gear changes betray someone in a hurry, the driver's foot to the floor commitment punctuated only by blink of an eye upshifts, clean and quick. Long after it first made itself heard, the little mustard yellow sports car crests the rise in the road, hurdles past and arcs into the fast right-hander that'll take it out of sight and onto yet. The revs dipping as the driver slots fifth, checks his watch and smiles, it's a good run. In half an hour, when the Alpine A110 noses into the port town, Jean-Pierre Limondon will know for sure whether he's bagged a personal best. Regardless, the rush of his Sunday drive will carry him through another working week at Alpine, the small French car company already being mentioned in the same breath as Porsche. I was young and crazy then. Living 250 miles from Yep at the weekends and coming back every Sunday for work, laughs Lymondon, to date and looking at least two decades younger than his 78 years. The goal was always to go faster than last weekend. And for all of us it was a competition to set the fastest time from Dieppe to Paris. Of course, you could drive much faster than, he smiles. Lymondon started at Alpine in 1963, drawn by the reputation of its founder, Jean Riedel. Who sold Renault from his Dieppe dealership when he wasn't piloting modified 4 CVS in 1000 mile road rallies, fueled by talent, adrenaline and ambition. I sent an application letter but after three weeks I'd had no reply so I went to Paris, to Riedel's office, explains Lyman Din. He apologized for having been too busy to reply and saw me for an interview. I was a trained electrical engineer, which wasn't relevant, but Riedel told me. No problem, I want to train people and educate them in the Alpine way of doing things. On the Monday I arrived in Dieppe by train, with a suitcase, age 23, and started work with Alpine, on the M63 sports prototype. The Alpine Gordini M63 was Alpine's first purpose-built race car, based on the production A110 and it's the A110 Berlin at you picture when you hear the word Alpine. A thorough evolution of the A108, the A110 is the impossibly pretty, McClody design coupe with Renault mechanicals under its fiberglass skirt that stars in a thousand evocative 60s and 70s rallying photos. Its slight silhouette arrowing down everything from Corsican tarmac to snowbound alpine tracks, Sibby lamps blazing on its perfect little nose. Presented at the 62 Paris show, the A110 would evolve into a fine road, race and rally tool, gaining road test praise. Class victories and big-name endurance racing events like the Sebring 12 hours in 1966 and overall victory on the Monte in 71.
Lyman Din bought his first A110 in 68, a 1300 G with the R8 Gordini engine in the back, I went for mustard, which was more of a Porsche color then. But you could have any color you liked on your Alpine. Some credit was required to buy it, but when I drove it I was like a kid with a toy you have been waiting years to own. Today I'm in the passenger seat of another classic A110, the green one Lyman Den now owns. Finished on July 28, 1977. Lyman Dins was the last Alpine built before the factory closed down that same year. Workers tucked a broom in its rear bumper, a poignant reference to the sweeper truck that follows the Tour de France cycle race and marks its passing. He fits inside the car as the stone sits inside an avocado. The A110 is cramped like a Caterham 7 but Lyman Din looks perfectly comfortable, arms in a relaxed bend to the three-spoke wheel. Legs positioned horizontally to the tiny, closely set pedals, which his feet, in white socks and loafers, work with practice dexterity. I'm still breathing in the old car smell and absorbing the Alpine's gorgeous detailing when we surge out of town and into a cascading series of bends. The grey tarmac is greasy with the first rain for a fortnight but Lyman in isn't phased, barely breaking as he tucks the A110's nose into the first corner, trusting that it'll grip. I hold my breath but needn't worry. The car rolling a little before running through with as much corner speed as Lyman Din dares to throw at the aged Michelins. The engine is just a 1600 but the car only weighs 790 kilograms, this is the important thing, Lyman Din tells me with a smile. Driving it is like playing, it is so agile. At the time I competed in some club races, with racing tires on the car and a racing exhaust I fitted myself when I reached the circuit. The car was better than I was. Lyman Din talks as he drives. I'd been in touch with the owner of this car, trying to get him to bring it to the first meeting of the Alpine Old Boys Club in 2011 but he couldn't make it. Guns the car in third, slots fourth. I tried again two years later with the same result. The car was well looked after, protected in a garage and the original engine was with it, he'd run the car with a competition engine. He told me the car was special to him and that he didn't want to sell. He'd had offers, including several from Japan, but had turned them down, saying that the A110 would be ready for the museum should Renault ever want to buy it. Back to third for a corkscrewing uphill right. Then I suggested I might like to buy it and he was happy, for him the important thing was always that the car stayed with the story. Heel and toe shifts down to second for a tight mini roundabout before pulling up by the seawall and, waiting for us, Alpine's next chapter. Mm -hmm. 